everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about how you can automatically populate the default bin code during the purchase receiving process. So uh, it's very confusing to some uh, users, like they enable the bin mandatory on the location card and they're expecting for the bin code to automatically populate on the purchase line when they enter the item on the purchase line. But it doesn't do that. So um, then let's see uh, why, uh, how this works and uh, why it's not populating. So first we have to start with the location, location card. So if you only enable the be mandatory on the location card, you did not enable require receive and require put away these advanced warehouse documents. So which means you are receiving from the purchase order directly. If you only have bin mandatory turned on, so the default bin comes from the item, which means you need to go to your bins and then you need to go to the bin content and make sure you have this default checkbox checked for the item. If you don't have this default checkbox checked, then it will not automatically populate that bin code. So you can see for this first item 1038, if we put it on the purchase line, then I have this default check mark disabled. It, then let's do a test, then see uh, what's gonna happen, okay? So uh, if we go to a uh, purchase order, then we just go to uh, whatever uh, open purchase order, we're just gonna add one more line here and put this item in. And uh, we're gonna put this location, which is the WMS7, which I have the be mandatory uh, turned on. Okay, so let's put a quantity. You can see I don't have any bin code populated here, okay? And then let's go to that location code and uh, we're gonna add that default back to uh, that bin content. So let's go to the bins and then go to the bin content. And then we're just gonna check this check mark again, okay? So it's for item 1038, then I have this default check mark checked. So let's go to uh, this PO again and uh, just add another line on this PO, not on this open PO for the same item. Then let's see what's gonna happen, okay? And we have to change the warehouse location to this location. You can see uh, just right after I enter the location code on the purchase line, and this bin code automatically populated after I turn on that default check mark. It's even before you enter the quantity. So it doesn't matter what quantity you enter there. And uh, so what this means is like, um, if you only have the bin mandatory turned down and you have the bin set up and you have to make sure for that item you entered on the purchase line in order for it to automatically populate the default bin code, then you need to have in the bin content, you need to have that default check mark checked, okay? So, but you can see under the warehouse fast hub, you have this setup default bin selection. You can select a fixed bin or you can select last use bin. If you select the fixed bin, which means that item always goes to that bin, right? If you select last use bin, uh, this item could be, it could be like uh, this time in this bin, but next time in another bin, but whatever, how, which bin you put that item, system just uh, automatically populate the last bin you use for that item, okay? So in this case, because I'm using the default bin selection fixed bin, and I have to make sure on my, uh, so I have to make sure because uh, on this bin content, right? I need to make sure I have this default check mark checked. And then uh, this item has to be the fixed bin. This bin code has to be the fixed bin for this item, right? I need to have these two check marks. If I don't, then uh, I will let the system to select. If I don't have the fixed and uh, I, 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 I only have the default, then probably uh, if you want the system to automatically populate the, the bin, also want the system to automatically populate the bin code, then probably you have to select the last used bin because you want whatever the last bin for that item, you want to automatically populate on the purchase line. Okay, so uh, because this item already have the item ledger entries um, on it, but even 
in this case because it was previously used as a fixed bin and uh, as long as there's still quantity in this bin then if you still if you have the default check mark you don't have the fixed check mark turned on then before the quantity got exhausted it will still automatically populate this bin code after the quantity got exhausted you will not see this item number here anymore because it's not fixed bin only when it's fixed bin when the quantity goes to zero then you will still see the item number is, is associated with that bin but if it's not fixed bin it's only a default bin when the quantity goes to zero then you will see this item number will be blank okay so which means even right now uh, on my location card i have the bin location uh bin def uh the default bin selection selected as a fixed bin but uh i only have um i only have the default check mark on the item but before that quantity got exhausted to zero i when i enter a line for this item on the purchase line it's still gonna default to this bin code okay so that's a difference okay so if just gonna do another testing because you could see i already disabled the fix and uh, just uh only have the default enabled on the item so if and now i go back to this po and uh, go to add another line here then uh, let's put this item and then let's put this location so you still see this bin code populated that's what i mentioned only after you exhausted that quantity then uh, it will not be there anymore okay so because i don't have the fix there so if you still want to see how that works, then we can create an item journal and then we can adjust out this quantity on that item. So we can create an item journal and then in the item journal, we can do a negative adjustment and then we're gonna adjust out this item for this location WMS7. Then we're gonna uh, do a negative adjustment for the 1000. So after we did this, then you will see on that bin content, you will not see for that item anymore. So if we go back to this location and go to the bins and then go to the bin content. So you, you see that line for the item 1038 associated with the bin 01, it disappeared because it's not the fixed bin. If it's a still, if it's a fixed bin, even after you, if it's a fixed bin, even after you exhausted this quantity, then you will still see this item number here. So we're gonna do another test for this item 1039, because we want to see if we exhausted this 100, but if it's a fixed bin, and if we can still see this item number, this line here for 1039, this uh, appear here, okay? So I'm gonna create another item journal, do another negative adjustment for this bin code, and then uh, we can see from there. So let's go to our item journal, and then we're just gonna do another negative adjustment, but this time we're gonna do it for this item, and uh, it's for this location seven, and uh, it's gonna be 100, okay? So I'm gonna post this, and then we're gonna go back to that, uh, location and take a look of the bin content for um, okay so gonna go to the bins and then go to the still this bin go to the bin content so you could see even the quantity got zero right there's no this item on this bin anymore but because it's fixed bin so you could still see this line here associated with 103 okay so that's what I'm talking about so um, but as I mentioned in that scenario, I have the uh, only have the default turned down. I don't have the fixed turned down. Before the quantity turned to zero, uh, next time you still have that bin code to automatically populate it, right? Even you have on the location card, you have the fixed bins selected. Otherwise, then uh, if it's not fixed bin, if you don't use the fixed bin, so let's go back to our bin content. If we do not have this fixed here, then only have the default. Then if, if on the location card you have the you have the last used bin selected, 
then the system will always use the last uh, the bin code on the last inbound entries for that item to populate. So you could see in this scenario, if you only have the bin mandatory turned on, if you want to automatically populate the default bin code on the purchase line, you, you need to turn on that default check mark on the bin content, which means you need, in order to have bin content, which means you already have inbound item ledger entries created before, right? So then next time it will next time you create another POL inbound entry, it can automatically populate that bin code. That's how it works. And uh, another scenario, uh, instead of doing it this way, because um, you may have a generic a bin you want to go, like a receiving bin, and you don't want every item go to different bins uh, based on the bin the, the bin code associated uh, bin code in the uh, bin content, so uh, which is associated to the item. Then, if that's the case, then you have to enable. So you have to enable at least the require receive. Okay. So because I already have some warehouse documents uh, for this location, and I cannot disable this uh, require put away. But what I mean is like if you have another location. If you want to, let me see if there's any other location I can show, but with the beam mandatory. Um, no, uh, this one, I'm not sure if I have any item ledger entries. If I have, yeah, it will not let you to turn on the beam mandatory if you have any open item ledger entry, if you have any item ledger entry. So, but uh, what you can do is like, um, in order to use a generic receiving bin code, at least you have to turn on require receive. I cannot turn off this put away right now because I have a put away documents with the header there. As long as you have a warehouse document associated to that, it will not let you to turn this off. But minimum, you have to turn on require receive in order to use this generic receiving bin. But the process will be different. In this case, I have both the require receive and the require put away turned down. So you will generate a warehouse receipt document, and then you have to create a put away from that warehouse receipt. Uh, so for the warehouse receipt document, it will default the, the bin to this receipt bin code. So if you don't have this turned down, then you could see this one, this receipt bin code will be grayed out. You cannot select anything. So this is associated to this checkbox, require receive, okay? So uh, let's do a task in this case. I'm gonna create a purchase order for the this location WMS2, then you can see how it works. So uh, let's go to our purchase orders and um, just create a brand new one because I'm not sure if I have not any existing one with that location. Just uh, take this vendor and then I'm gonna, you can, you can do it on the header to put in the warehouse location on the header or you can do it on the line. So uh, for this location, we can change it to WMS2. And then when you do it on the line, it will just inherit that. So um, let's put this item and uh, so you could see on the line, because it's using another document, it's not using the purchase order for receiving. So you could see the bin, co bin code does not populate on the purchase line at all, because it's gonna populate on the warehouse receipt document, okay? So we're gonna release this document, and then we're gonna create the warehouse receipt for uh, this document. And uh, for the created warehouse receipt, it's created. You could see on the header, it just default the bin code to the receive, to this receiving bin, right? So that's how it works. So in summary, like uh, based on your different uh, setup on the location card, then uh, it to automatically populate the bin code uh, during the purchase receiving will be on different documents. If you have the require receive turned on, then uh, it will populate the the bin code, the receiving bin code on your warehouse receipt header. If you don't have these turned on, you don't have the require receive and the require put away turned on, then it depends on the items. On the items, uh, the bin, if it's a bin, it's associated for that item has a, 
a default check mark in the bin content, then uh, based on your default bin selection setup, so it will auto populate the bin code associated to that item. So it's not going to be a generic bin like a receiving bin. Okay, thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. Hope it's helpful. I will see you guys again next time. Thank you for watching this Archer Point video. Stay in the know with the latest on Microsoft Dynamics by subscribing to our channel. You can also learn more from our blog at archerpoint.com or email info at archerpoint.com to contact us. See you in the next video.